Hey guys, so I'm going to do another get ready with me and my face is really broken out today and I just washed it and just put on some moisturizer so it's like really red and stuff. Um, but I'm going to do another get ready with me video and I guess I'll include a little bit of my skincare, uh, I guess not skincare, but my foundation routine with this video just because I do have a bit of breakouts and I'll show you guys how I like to cover um, redness. So first for my primer I'm going to be using the Monistat Chafing Gel Relief Powder Gel, whatever this is. I really like this as a primer. It honestly feels exactly the same as um, all the other primers I've ever tried and it's so so cheap and um, it has like the same ingredients as primers and I'm really liking it, so I think I'm going to stick with this for a while. So next I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Hydrating Under Eye Primer, and I bought this a long time ago, and I'm just so bad at using it. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that on my finger. So it's just this really light kind of, um, almost like a lotion-y kind of consistency, so I'm just going to put that under my eyes just to further hydrate them, because I do kind of have problems with my makeup creasing and then having... All the um, concealer under my eyes will look dry, so I'm going to try this out and try to make more of an effort to use this to see if it helps. And next I'm going to be using the e.l.f. HD Lifting Concealer, and this one is the green one, um, and it just says adjusting. So I'm going to use a little bit of this on the red spots, mainly this kind of area here, and maybe just a few little areas. Um, but this you have to be very careful with because it's actually like super super pigmented green um, so I like to put just a little bit of it on the back of my hand and then I'll use my finger and just kind of like dab around it a bit and then I can just like gently blend it over where I want to cover some of that redness so I put a little bit around this area and it does a minimal about um, a minimal amount of um, canceling out the red and you want to be very careful because if you put too much of this it will show through your foundation and it will look like you have a big green splotch on your skin so it seems like it's not doing a whole lot yet um just when looking at it you can still see a bit of the redness but whenever you cover it with your foundation and concealer that's when it really helps so again i'm just gonna really lightly um, spread this out over any of those areas where I'm having some redness and again I kind of like to blend it out um, quite a bit so that I don't end up with any green alphabet skin. And I try not to go overboard with this because it's super easy to do so I just need to put it in the spots that are really red which just around any breakouts I have and typically around just like my cheekbone area I just have like really um, noticeably red skin and this is definitely a little bit more red than my skin usually is just because I did wash it about you know 20 minutes ago and uh, I kind of like picked up my skin a bit which is a really bad habit of mine but <sighs> I don't know if I'll ever be able to break that Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the green color. So like I said, I like to blend it out a lot just so that I don't end up with like a green cast to my skin. So you don't really need to um, completely block out all the red with this alone because then you will end up with pretty green skin. Um, so just like I said, I like to apply it thinly, evenly and more of the correction will come with the actual foundation and concealer. So to apply my foundation, I'm going to be using the Real Techniques Beauty Sponge, and I have been using this for about the past two or three weeks. The first time I used this, I was a little bit on the fence about it, and I think one thing that really helped was just that first time using it, I said that it seemed to absorb a little bit more of my makeup than I had wanted it to, um, but I think that was just because it was the very first time I've used it and it kind of needs to like absorb a little bit and then after that it won't really absorb much so I've definitely um, changed my opinion about this a lot and I have been using this non-stop for the past like I said two or three weeks that I've had it and I have had another um, beauty sponge like this before that was just like a cheap one from I think TJ Maxx and um, I didn't like that one and I like I said I've never had the beauty blender so I can't you know directly compare the two but I really like this it's like five dollars I think the beauty blender is like 19 or 20 dollars so I'm so happy with this I'm not even gonna deal with probably buying the beauty blender ever um, 
I really like this so far. I've gotten a lot faster at applying my makeup with it and I just really like how it looks and I've actually noticed that I like using, um, there are some foundations that I've never really liked with applying with brushes before and I've tried those and I liked them a lot more with this so, um, I don't know, I just, I really like this, and I'm going to do another video talking uh, in depth about this and everything, uh, but I just wanted to throw that in because I uh, know I'm going to do a video about that soon. So for the two foundations I'm going to use, I'm going to mix them. Um, I'm using my all-time favorite foundation, the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation. The only thing I don't like about this is I wish there were more colors. I think there might be like five or six colors um, and this is the lightest one in ivory and it's just still not light enough and it's a little bit yellow a little bit yellow toned for my skin because I have pink undertones um, so to kind of net like balance it out and kind of lighten it a bit I'm going to be using the Revlon color stay um, in the color 110 ivory so I'm going to mix these two colors together so here is the color difference between the two foundations this one's the elf one and this one is the color stay Revlon um, once you can see, this one's a bit darker and this one's a little bit more of a pink tone, so I'm just going to mix those two together with just the sponge. And I actually <laughs> ended up dispensing a little bit more foundation than I'm going to need, so that'll be a little bit wasteful. Um, so then I get it on here and then I just kind of tap it around just to get the um, most of it off. And then I've just gotten so much faster at applying it. And I found that I actually like this a lot more than just my standard um, brushes. I used to use um, like the Sonia Kashuk brush. I used to use um, this one that I got from Big Lots that I really liked as well. Um, but I just find that I really like this a lot. Um, and I wasn't sure how I would like this just because I've never liked using sponges to apply my, my foundation. So I'm actually like really pleasantly surprised with how easy this is and, you know, just kind of getting used to it didn't take very long. Just after about maybe like the third use, I was really kind of starting to get a handle on how to use it. Next, using my Glamouflage Concealer, I'm going to apply a little bit this, a little bit of this over those areas I was talking about where I put the um, green corrector. Then I'm just going to put it on any little spot I have. I don't really like it much for um, applying concealer under my eye. I just use my fingers for that just because this is so kind of awkward and large under my eye. So I end up just doing my um, actual concealer for my under eyes the same way I've always done. But it works. It works really well. Now you can see I've definitely minimized um, a lot of the actual red color and that helps a lot with the green um, corrector color and also with the actual foundation and concealer. So you can see that my skin doesn't have that weird green kind of cast to it like it did um, before my foundation. So um, I would definitely say using these kind of corrective colors depending on um, what the product is and what brand it's by. I've seen some that were super um, really like thin and sheer to begin with but this one is really really opaque so that's good because then you don't need as much product and it lasts longer um but the bad part is is you it's really easy to overdo it so you just kind of have to be careful um with these and then for my under eyes i'm going to use the same concealer um the glamouflage and i'm just going to dab some under here and I put a little bit more than i um, usually want um and a lot of people like to use a different um, concealer for their under eyes usually to cancel out darkness um, or dark circles I really don't have that much of a problem with discoloration under my eyes so I can get away with using um, the same concealer and it doesn't really you know make much of a difference to me so I just use the same one just because I don't really have that much of a color corrective um, issue with my under eyes but if you do then definitely a peach or kind of a salmon-y color concealer um, is good at color correcting those dark spots. So next I'm going to set my under eye um, with the Elf High Definition Under Eye Setting Powder. I love this stuff and I didn't realize how many um, Elf products I actually used until I started doing tutorials again. 
but honestly they're just these are the ones I really like and they're so inexpensive so no apologies for that so I'm just gonna use um a this is an angled um I guess it's I would call it like a concealer brush um, so I'm just gonna use that to apply the under eye setting powder and I like to kind of overdo it a little bit because this is transparent it doesn't leave any color it just kind of sets the concealer because that's something that I hear a lot of people talk about that they don't like about the hard candy concealer is that it doesn't really set that great and I agree and I've just found that this has helped like significantly with my under eye creasing and I wouldn't say that this completely 100% eliminates any eye creasing but just for me it significantly helps I noticed that it doesn't look nearly as bad as quickly as it would without so and if I'm not wearing any eyeshadow that day I will take a little bit of this and go over my actual eyelids because um, some of my foundation and concealer ends up getting in the lid and um, it will most definitely crease within like minutes so if I'm not going to wear any eyeshadow that's something I'll do sometimes I'll do it regardless and then I'm going to set my foundation with my um, elf mist um, and setting spray again another elf product and I actually like to do this um, before I do my blush and um, bronzer if I'm using a powder um, if I'm using a cream then I will do those first and then set it I don't know why I do it differently but I just do um, and I really like to set the foundation just because whenever I'm using a brush with a powder it keeps it from moving around as easily so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe you can follow me on Instagram link is below and until my next video I will talk to you guys later bye